Welcome to Model Horse Tax School. My name is Carrie, and today we're continuing or finishing up, depending upon how you want to <laughs> view it, on the Australian stock saddle. Okay, so we're going to start with. Um, I, I don't really want to do this English girth, but I'm going to show you how it's done. Okay, I do these. These are just so easy. Um, and the thing is, they fit a wide range of models. So this is just a piece of elastic. So it fakes being a web-style girth. And I cut, it's probably long, cut a 5-inch piece. And this is a quarter-inch elastic. So I cut a 5-inch piece of quarter-inch elastic. And the first thing I'm going to do... Hang on. Make sure I got the right ones. Oops. These. So cut them. Now I did sky these where the buckles are going to go. Working with the natural curve of your elastic, because it does curve, we're going to glue this down on both sides. Because it's not leather to leather, I'm going to go ahead and put a little clamp on it. And when I say work with the natural curve, that means this is the side on the belly, this is the side on the animal's belly. So keep that curve working for the animal's belly. Okay. It's helpful to have it work on both sides. Now you can put in faux stitch marks if you want to. It's entirely up to you. Alright, now I have four buckles that I've already cleaned. I'll go ahead and put those on. And then go ahead and, I mean, however you want to do this. Um, this is not cooperating, so I'll go ahead and just do the fold there. I'd have to skive it thinner. And, well, maybe I'll do that off camera, skive it thinner so I can, um, I thought I skived it and it wasn't thin enough. You can get this, all this buckle all the way down here so that when you fold it over you secure the elastic on the opposite side as well. So that side was disappointing. But let's see what we got on side two. Let's see, this one's skived better. Okay, buckle is where you put it over the center bar. Yeah, this one's better. That one just I need it a little bit thinner for it to behave itself. Okay, all the way down to where the split is. And then fold this over. Now obviously this girth doesn't have like a hook for your uh, martingale or whatever, right? But that is what it looks like. Okay, and then I'll just, I'll fix this later. So for this Australian stock saddle, I want to use a Western um, web girth. I don't want to do English, so I have to create something that will convert the billets to a jump ring. So I'm going to take these same pieces, and we're going to have 
Well, I should probably close that up first. I hate it when these things are open. That's a manufacturing thing. All right, now it's closed. I'm go ahead and um, okay. That's a ten millimeter jump ring, and these are eighth inch buckles. Now, I skived this whole piece. I almost think I need that to be a D. Because it's not enjoying itself in this position. No, there we go. Hey, okay, these can be a little bit shorter. I only need them to go to there because it's not holding elastic on. So I will go ahead and fold these over and trim away the excess. I don't want it too long. There we go. Still need to make the other one. Let me just grab a saddle here and um, show you how this works. So we go ahead and put the billets on. Which is because I tend to be a bit of a perfectionist. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this excess here. It's not necessary. I mean, I don't have to, but... Oh, that's better. Kind of drive me a little bonkers there. So... Hello, my name is Annoying. There you go. Alright. Behave yourselves. And then that's how it goes. Which is why it's me show, so we're gonna wanna get rid of that and then well yeah. All right, I'm going to make one for the other side, and um, then I'll be back. All right, so if you notice this one is finished, it's because I make two uh, when I do these videos. So this is the one that's already got the stirrups done. All right, so what I need to do... 
And we always put this this way. So this is wrong side. Now I've skived this. It's eighth inch. I've skived it. I have um, sharpied the back so it's all the same color. And um, let me see. Oh, I should measure them. I mean, I probably. Let's see. Uh, about five inches length. And we're going to need one on both sides. Oops. This is how we do our latigo, right? We all know. Now I can do double, triple, however I want to do this. Um, in around all the way around and back into the loop or the ring and then back into the created loop there. So that's your that's your latigo on one side, right? So because what I'll do when I know where it fits is I'll go ahead and use my hole puncher and I'll make a hole. But I don't want to do that for this until I fit it to the exact model I want it for, right? So, because I want to make sure that might be too short. I may, um, I may need to loosen it up and, you know. But uh, there you go. That's what the Western's going to look like. And, um, Okay, Western stirrups. I've done these before. Nothing really new on these, so I'll just really go through it briefly. First thing I want to do on what I would consider the inside or the lining uh, stirrup leather, I'm going to put holes. Now this is the hidden pin method. So basically, we're not going to see the pin. So pull that through on one side and then same with the other side. Right. And now, now sometimes I'll put aluminum in, but these are so thin. Uh, the aluminum tends to stick out. I can't cut it small enough, but I like the aluminum to help shape it. It's just a little strip in there. If you've seen my other videos, I'm not doing that on this. Okay, now I'm going to match the edge here. I am not going to glue the last like quarter inch down here, but the rest of this is going to be glued. It is absolutely critical that this dries before we try to bend it or the pieces will slip and they won't remain flush. So we want to, I'm squashing really good. I'm trying to make sure they're flush all the way and then These need to dry completely. Well, I don't mean set up. I mean overnight would be great. At least give it an hour. Um, but we're going to go ahead and just leave it be. And I'll go ahead and do the same for the other side. And when they are dry, we will move on. Basically, your spacer is just that. I 
is going to move freely along the bar and it's going to give it some bulk and it's going to keep the stirrup from looking weird on the leather. I know, if these birds are bugging you guys, I will put them in the other room when I record. I like the sound of uh, living creatures in my room. That's why they're in here. Just, just like that sound. Okay, now we are going to pull back this outside. And then we're going to get that needle, I'm sorry, that pen, and you want to bend it kind of here in the middle. That's why I prefer shorter ones for these, but it's what I have. Try really hard not to gouge yourself. Okay. Try to use like my pliers here to give it that bell shape as evenly as possible. And then we want to take this because we have the spacer. We can just bend it right there. Right. And then I need to cut this right about here. I don't want it too long. There we go. Oh, this is this you have to throw you have to catch these. Don't put them in the carpet. Or on the ground, they hurt when you step on them. They're really, really, really hurt. Okay, so now we want to put that in the middle. And close it up. Oops. Did not mean to put glue there. Now, I used to have There we go. Well, that's acceptable, I guess. Now we're going to do the treads. I would really should do is sew these on. But 
can deal with that later. Okay. Stirrups. So what I do, I don't want to sew them. So pull these together and just kind of pinch them. So I got a finger press is what it's called. And then I go ahead and cut through the finger press. short but it's all right just stretch it a little and now it's edge to edge there you go a strip tread That is two. And now for our spacer. They're never that long. So I'm going to take a lid off the top and then I'm going to trim the corners. So a lid off the top and then trim the corners. Alright. Now, don't think I have to edge coat those. So now, in the stirrup, buckle it. Now you can do the little house point. So it looks like the roof of a house. Or you can do the long point, whichever you prefer. I should have two more pieces. These are the keepers. Now, until I have a rider that actually specifies how long the stirrup leathers are, on these they pretty much fall just past, I think that's a little short, the flap. And I need for the buckle to be up higher. Okay, so I'm going to collect all of this and take one of these, and that little flap goes in the front. And then it's basically like the sliding keeper. And there you go. All right. Here we go. So that's pretty much it for the Australian stock saddle. Um, <laughs>